Okay, this was a test on exponential functions. So if you're still studying exponential functions, this will be a good review for you. This is part one. In this video, we will graph exponential functions and uh, talk about transformations of exponential functions. Okay, so problem number one. Um, I see that this is going to be shifted down five and have a vertical stretch by a factor of two. However, we will start by just graphing the parent function, which is just this part, three to the x power. And since we're just doing the parent function, we can get away with the following x values every time, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So um, we are graphing the function that's three to the x power, okay, so that means we're doing 3 to the negative 2 power, 3 to the negative 1 power, 3 to the 0 power, 3 to the 1 power, and 3 squared. Well, 3 to the negative 2 power um, is 1 over 3 squared, so that's 1 over 9 and then three to the negative one power is just one over three. Anything to the zero power is one, three to the one power is just three, and three squared is nine. All right, notice how the top two and the bottom two are just reciprocals of each other. That will make your calculations go faster, and it's sort of self-checking. Okay, um, before we go graphing these points, Sometimes we need a third column. We need a third column when there is an, an A value, and there is an A value of two. Um, so we'll make a third column for the A value. All right, in this third column, we are going to do the A value. So um, we had an A value of two. So we're going to multiply all these y values by two. So we're gonna do two y and put it right here. So um, two times y, that's gonna be two ninths. Okay, and that's gonna be two thirds. And then that'll be two and six and 18. All right, I'm just multiplying all these by two. So now, uh, once we have the third column, we can really uh, disregard the middle column. And we're just going to be graphing these. So negative 2 comma 2 ninths. That's going to be negative 2 and very close to 0. Okay, and then we have negative 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, it's going to be about here. And then we have 0 comma 2 will be here, 1 comma 6, and then we'll have um, 2 comma 18. Now 2 18 is going to be a little bit off the graph, but we're going to graph it anyway. So 16, 17, 18, it'd be just about here. Okay, do not connect these dots. This is just our skeleton. We still have to do the shift. Um, this minus 5, which uh, unfortunately is a dot right on it, but this minus 5 is going to be a, a translation down 5. All right, and there's no other shifting happening. So we need to take these five dots and move them all down 5. Okay, so if I do that, those will be my real points. So if I move this down five, one, two, three, four, five, it's going to be like right here. And then if I move this down five, there you go. And if this is down five, okay, and down five. And last but not least, down five, because this is this was at 18, so that's three above, so that's three, and then two more. Okay. 
So these are the points that we have to actually graph. It will help if we know where the asymptote is. And of course, the asymptote was at 0, but we moved it down 5. So this negative 5 will be the asymptote. OK, so let's go ahead and draw that. Draw your asymptote as a dotted line at negative 5. So there's your asymptote. Now just draw a smooth curve through your five points. Make sure your graph goes all the way to the edge on the left and all the way to the edge on the top. So your graph should look something like this. And uh, so that's it for number one. Uh, for number two, once again, let's start with just the parent function, one-fourth to the x power. So as we make our table, uh, once again, we'll use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So since we are doing 1 fourth to the x power, that's 1 fourth to the negative 2, 1 fourth to the negative 1 power, 1 fourth to the 0 power, 1 fourth to the 1 power, and 1 fourth squared. Now, when you do a negative power, to a fraction, you do the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. So this becomes 4 squared, which is 16. The reciprocal is just 4. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 fourth to the uh, 1 power is just 1 fourth. And 1 fourth squared is 1 16th. You square the top and the bottom. Again, notice that the top two and the bottom two are just reciprocals of each other. Are we going to need a third column this time? No. We need a third column when there's an A value. For example, in the previous problem, this two in the front is the A value, this multiplier. Um, the A value here is one. We don't need a third column for that. So let's go ahead and uh, graph these points as our skeleton right now. So we have 2, uh, I'm sorry, negative 2, 16. All right, so here's negative 2, and 16 will be right about here. And then negative 1, 4. And 0, comma 1. one comma one fourth and two comma one sixteenth alright so one comma one fourth is going to be very low um, but two comma one sixteenth is going to be so low it's going to appear to be at zero alright so this is our skeleton this do not connect these points this is not the final answer because we still have to do this uh, shifting so um, this negative 3 in this position is going to send us to the right by 3. It's the opposite of the way it looks. Uh, the plus 4 in this position is going to send us up 4. So let's move all five of these dots that we just graphed, right 3 and up 4. OK, so 1, 2, 3, and then up 4. Then the next one is about here. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Right three and up four, everybody. Okay, this one's already off the graph. It's going to be even more off the graph. But um, if I go right three and then up one, two, three, four, it'll be about here. Okay, just do your best. All right. Oh, I missed one. Um, did I miss? I feel like I'm missing a point. Which one am I missing? Oh, I missed the y-intercept here. So right three, one, two, three, up one, two, three, four. This point was missing. All right, take your five points and uh, draw a smooth curve. Wait, let's do the asymptote first. The asymptote will be at positive 4. Show it as a dotted line. 
All right, now draw a smooth curve through your five points. Make sure your curve goes all the way to the edge of the graph and all the way up. So your final graph should look something like this. All right, so problem number three refers back to problem number two above. So the domain, which is the x values, is uh, from negative in excuse me, from negative infinity to positive infinity because it goes left forever and it goes right forever. Okay, all exponential functions have a domain from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is more limited. Um, you have to give the range in order from bottom to top, least to greatest. So the lowest value is the asymptote of 4, and then it goes up to infinity. So 4 to infinity. Make sure your 4 gets around parentheses. It is an asymptote, and the graph never touches it. So the 4 itself is not included. Um, speaking of the horizontal asymptote, it is the line y equals Four. Don't just put 4, put y equals 4. It's the equation of a line. Okay, so that is it for number 3. Okay, so for number 4, given this parent function, we're supposed to describe the following transformations. Okay, um, sh these should have all been called g, so it wasn't the same as function f, because you can't have two different functions be um, called the same thing. Anyway, I'm nitpicking. This one has two transformations. Um, the negative in front is a reflection over the x-axis. That minus one is a shift to the right one. Okay, it's the opposite of what you would normally think. And uh, that's it for a. All right, let me delete that because I cut and pasted. This has two transformations as well. This one-third in the front is a vertical compression. Okay. Um, the graph will be one-third as tall as it was before. And uh, the negative four is a shift or a translation down four. All right, this one has three transformations. The three in the front here is a vertical stretch. by a factor of three. Um, this plus two is a translation to the left two. It's opposite of the way it looks. And the plus five is a shift up five. All right, so that's it for number four. All right, now let's see how to solve these two exponential equations. Um, especially when they have these fractions in them. Here's how we deal with the fractions. If you have n to the negative 1 power, you know that's going to be 1 over n. <clears throat> so it sort of drops you down to the denominator. So there's no reason why we can't go the other way. So if I see something of the form 1 over n, if it is convenient, I can write it as n to the negative 1 power. And this is the form that we're going to need to solve these types of equations. Um, so, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we need to get rid of this 5. So let's add 5 to both sides. So, let's see, that's going to give us 1 third to the x plus 1 power is equal to 81. Okay, now we need like bases. I see the 3 right here, and uh, 81 turns out to be 3 to the 4th power. So we can use an exponential table if we need to, and see there's 81, that is 3 to the 4th power. You know, of course 81 is also 9 squared, but that wouldn't help us right now because we need base 3. So Now, like I said, I could write 1 over 3 as 3 to the negative 1 power. So do that. 
we will go ahead and put this x plus 1 in parentheses. And like I said, 81 is 3 to the fourth power. If the bases are the same, then the exponents must be equal. So that means negative 1 times x plus 1 must equal 4. So then I can do the distributive property that gives me negative x minus 1 is equal to 4. Let's add 1 to both sides. That gives us negative x is equal to 5 and divide by negative 1 on both sides. So that means x equals negative 5. All right, now let's, that was number 5. Let's take a look at number 6. All right, same type of thing. Um, so I see a base 2, and 8 can also be written as base 2, because 8 is, let me zoom out a little. All right, because 8 is 2 to the third power. OK, so I can write 8 as 2 to the third power. And I can write 1 over 2 as 2 to the negative 1 power. So I would put my x minus 1 in parentheses. And I would put my 2x minus 1 in parentheses. OK. Since the bases are the same, then the exponents must be equal. So 3 times x minus 1 must equal negative 1 times 2x minus 1. So 3x minus 3 must equal negative 2x plus 1. So at this point, I would add 2x to both sides to bring the x's together. All right, so that's going to give me 5x minus 3 is equal to 1. And uh, you know what to do from here. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. And that's going to give me 5x is equal to 4. And then I will divide both sides by 5. And just go ahead and leave this as a fraction. And we'll have x is equal to 4 fifths. Number seven. Okay, this one's a little bit different. Um, there's no getting something by itself. Um, we just have to have like bases. And uh, let's see, I can rewrite both of these as base three. Por ejemplo, nine can be written, that means for example, nine can be written as three squared. And 27 is three to the third power. What do I do with these? Well, I put the 4x here in parentheses. And I put the 3x minus 2 also in parentheses. All right, especially I need it here to remind me that I have to do the distributive property. OK, so that would give me 3 to the 8x power equals 3 to the 9x minus 6 power. Anyway, it's time for that logical jump. If the bases are equal, the exponents would have to be equal. So that means 8x must equal 9x minus 6. Nothing happened to the 3's. We're just using a little bit of logic. Um, what happened to the 3? Did we cancel it out? Did we subtract? Did we divide? I'm never exactly sure how to answer that question. Nothing happened to the threes. Um, what am I going to do now? What do we do now, man? Game over. Um, subtract 9x from both sides. So that's going to give me negative x is equal to negative 6. OK. 
Um, that game over thing that I just said, that was from a movie called Aliens. You know, not Alien, which was the original movie. Sigourney Weaver. Um, Aliens, the sequel, which was better. Um, but I recommend that you not watch it because you can't handle it. It's just too much for your sensitive mind, so don't, don't see it. Um, so divide both sides by negative one, so that'll be x equals six. Maybe when you're older, you know, after you graduate college, you know, kid, kids mature late uh, these days. Um, it's not your fault, you know, just society's gotten soft, which is good, you know, prosperity and all that. Um, so that's it for number seven. Well, for number eight, before we uh, get like bases and such, we need to get rid of this one half. So let us multiply both sides by two, which will cancel this out. So then I will have eight to the two x plus one power. Let's see, 256 times two. Chabow. 512. Okay, so that's 512. Now hopefully 512 can be written as either a base 8 or a base 2, since 8 can be written as a base 2. Um, let's look at the power table. Okay. And uh, let's look under 8 first. So there's 512. So 8 to the third power is 512. So let's go with that. So 512 can be written as 8 to the third power. And then over here we have 8 to the 2x plus 1 power. Time for the logic. What happened to the 8, Mr. Burton? What happened? 2x plus 1 is equal to 3. OK, it's a logic. If the bases are equal, the powers are equal. We just don't care about the eights anymore. We just we all we care about is x. So we move on. We we let it go, let it go. We don't need the eight anymore. I know American Idol, right? Or what, like the voice, something. Anyway, um, and I'm sleepy. So imagine how I would sound. If I were fresh or young, because, you know, old people. Anyway, um, sh -bow. X is 1 is the point. Love it. Believe it. All right, number 9 looks a little different. Um, what we need to do is basically get this half of the uh, equation to the other side. And we can do that. These are cube roots, by the way. Looks a little fuzzy. Um, we can do that by adding this chunk to both sides. All right, adding the cube root of 2x plus 7 to both sides. So that will give us the cube root of 4x minus 1 equals the cube root of 2x plus 7. OK, um, we could now take, uh, you yeah, the we could cube both sides. That's what I'm struggling to say. And that will cancel out both of these radicals. So that's going to give us 4x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 7. Yeah, so um, let's keep going with this. Subtract 2x from both sides. So that'll give me 2x minus 1 is equal to 7. Add 1 to both sides. And that'll give us 2x is equal to 8. 
And then it's time to divide both sides by 2. And that is going to give us x equals 4. OK, we should check that and make sure it works, because you never know. But uh, I'm pretty sure it works. So I'm going to move on and just live dangerously. All right, number 10, we got to get this part of the equation by itself first. So we need to add 7 to both sides, foist. All right, so that's going to give us 2 times the quantity 4x minus 12 to the 3 fifths power equals 16. Then we shall divide both sides by 2. All right, so those will cancel out. And that will leave us with 4x minus 12 to the 3 fifths power is equal to 8. Now, um, to deal with the fractional power, you um, can raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. OK, so what I'm doing is, Let's do this. I'm raising this side to the 5 over 3 power. And I'm raising this to the 5 over 3 power. Now, when you do a power to a power, you multiply. And when you multiply 3 fifths times 5 over 3, that just makes 1. OK, because these wind up canceling each other out and making 1. Um, so that's going to just leave 4x minus 12 over here. Now over here, um, when we deal with a fractional exponent, we know that the numerator is the power and the denominator is the root. This is power over root. So it will be helpful if we rewrite this in radical form. So this is the cube root of 8. Okay, so this will be the cube root of 8. And then the fifth power I will put on the outside. So this is what we're dealing with. So that means we have 4x minus 12. Now the cube root of 8 is 2. And then we've got that fifth power. So that makes 4x minus 12 equals 2 to the fifth power is 32. All right, if you did not know that, use your exponent table. 2, fifth power, 32. OK, um, now let's add 12 to both sides. Running out of paper. Don't you know? So that'll be 4x is equal to 44. Excellent. Quick, what is that from? What am I quoting when I say excellent? I'll give you a hint. I'm sort of steepling my fingers together when I do it. Excellent. All right. All right. Post a comment if you know where that's from. Post a comment. It's math. It's a game. It's both. Everybody's a winner. So that's going to give us x equals 11. OK. There you go. Guess I should put that on the answer line. It's number 10. Number 9 was 4. Am I all caught up? Yep. Okay. Up. Oh, wow. Look, this video is getting a little bit long. I'm going to have to pause this mess. And uh, before I go on to the other pages okay so that'll be it for this video we'll pick up with part two where we will create our own exponential function that fits these criteria and other fun stuff multiple choice questions whatever some review stuff and stuff